All right, so so far we've been talking about the content layer, the presentation layer, and now we'll talk about the behavior layer, the interactivity, JavaScript. This is what will allow us to interact with the website, to click and have something happen. Right now, it, it's not interactive. You click on stuff, nothing happens. I want to be able to click on something, and something happens. That's basically JavaScript. So JavaScript is another language. Uh, HTML was invented in around 1989. Uh, I said this last time. HTML in 89, uh, CSS in 98, and uh, JavaScript I think like in 96, maybe 94. So these technologies have been around a while, uh, 20 years and such. And so JavaScript keeps improving and better. It's really becoming the de facto language. People ask me, I'm just starting off with programming. What languages should I learn? More and more it's recommended JavaScript because it can just it's just so powerful. They can make great web apps and as we're seeing now, uh, Android apps, iPhone apps, all of that. There's many languages and they do many things specialized um, for your needs, but JavaScript is one of the ones that if you have some experience in that, it's very powerful. And what you learn there could still also translate to other languages. Yes? The difference between JavaScript and Java? Big difference. Java does not equal JavaScript at all. Uh, Java came out first, and then JavaScript came out after that, and from what I read, basically, there was the people behind JavaScript, which was actually Netscape, uh, said, hey, Java is hot, let's borrow their name, and they called it JavaScript. But there's no, there's no parity between commands and syntax and such, it's completely different. But Java is basically to create full-featured desktop apps. You can make an app in Java, you know, you can make the web browser Firefox in Java. You can make, you know, a, a video editor in Java. It's for making big, robust apps. And JavaScript is for basically working in a, in a web browser, and nowadays in a, in a mobile device, but uh, traditionally that's what those two things were. So one does not translate to the other actually. But if you have any experience in any programming languages or scripting languages, it's helpful. Because if you've never really done any programming, you have to think in a new way. Computers are alien. They don't think the way we think. We have to think in the way they think. We have to talk the way they talk. Even though humans invented computers and programming languages, we have to think in that, you know, alien language. So what we'll do here in in our document is make some very simple JavaScript interaction, interactivity. I want to click and have something happen. There's many ways to do this. And we'll start again with perhaps not the best way, but the most direct way. We'll write some inline JavaScript, because we can have the same thing of JavaScript. Inline JavaScript, embedded JavaScript, and external JavaScript. So let's say after Let's say after this div, let's say just to make it make sense, let's say um, on line 60, so after the div, we'll, we'll write click me. We haven't added any markup here, so it doesn't have any meaning yet. We've just written click me, but there's no HTML to give it a meaning. What we'll do is we'll wrap the A tag, the anchor tag, the link tag, and normally what this would be set up to do would be to, to click on this and it goes to another page, let's say. But I want to borrow this so that when we click on it, we activate JavaScript and make it do something besides its default behavior, which is to take us to another website, another link. So the A tag is to create links, and the A tag has the attribute href. We saw that previously. And href here we would fill in if we wanted to click on that, and it would go to Amazon.com inside the href attribute in the quotes we would write the Amazon website. We saw that previously. So 
That's a link. We've seen that. But instead, what we're going to do is that when someone clicks on that, something will happen. Something will pop up on screen. We're going to change that default behavior. So instead of it going to a real website in the quotes, we're going to have the, the pound symbol. And the pound symbol here has a, a, a bit of a different meaning. You would we've seen it before that the pound symbol has the meaning that it's a that it's an ID, uh, but here simply the pound symbol by itself would be a dummy link or a or a null link. It doesn't go anywhere. The purpose of this is to have the a tag behave like a link, but not really go anywhere. So this is not going to go anywhere. I'm going to add another attribute here, and this is this will be our inline JavaScript. So after href, and again, this is not the best way to do it, but it's the most direct to see as a beginner. Um, we have various ways to interact with the screen. There's various events that could happen. A user, so a person that visits my site or app, has various ways to interact with my site. They could trigger various events. For example, they can click on a button. They could drag a box. They could tap and hold their finger. There's various things that they can do. Those are events. So I'm going to say, whenever someone clicks this link, do some JavaScript. So we've got a property called onClick. It's one word, it's lowercase, on click. And because it's a it's an attribute like we've seen before, it has the same sort of syntax, the same way to, to write it. You've got the name of the attribute equals quote end quote. So here we've got and we're waiting for an event to happen. We're waiting for there to be a click. And there's a bunch of events that we have with a specific name on click, on drag, let's say on double click on download, on ready, on complete. We have different things on load. When there's a certain event, do something. Here we're waiting for a click. And what we will do in the quotes is a little bit of JavaScript. We've got a very simple JavaScript command called alert. Alert, an alert is going to happen. And we will see oftentimes that JavaScript has a peculiar way to be written because we're going to say alert, open close parentheses, and what this alert will do is basically create a pop-up box. You'll click on the, on, the, on the link that says click me, a pop-up box will appear, and we can write words, we can write text inside of that pop-up box. So in the parentheses, we will have it display the text that we want it to display. But the syntax further is, inside of the parentheses, in single quotes, we will write our message. Hello. That's our very first JavaScript command, alert. We've got a JavaScript command called alert. And this particular one will simply make a pop-up with the word hello. Let's try that. Save it and, and, and launch it. Click me. me. Papa, hello. Interaction. The interactive layer. So there's a built-in JavaScript method called alert. I might use interchangeably command, but more accurately it's called a method. Let's make some notes down here. JavaScript notes, and it's got a capital S in the middle, traditionally, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript notes. Can also be inline, embedded, or external. Usually waits for some form of 
interaction or event, that's the more correct term, waits for some sort of event to occur. The event was that I clicked the link. After an event, the result is uh, some JavaScript command, technically. Uh, after an event, a method occurs. JavaScript methods. So just like we've seen that, uh, we've seen uh, you know half a dozen or ten or so uh, HTML tags. Um, we've seen the concept of CSS. JavaScript itself that can be a, a whole month-long class just by itself. That could be a whole. That could be a whole um, 620-page book by itself. JavaScript. So another can of worms. But all three of these relate to each other. Uh, basically one is dependent on the other. HTML all by itself doesn't look that pretty. HTML all by itself doesn't do that much. Uh, CSS needs HTML to make it look pretty. And then JavaScript uh, needs some HTML uh, perhaps to trigger and also JavaScript could affect CSS to change uh, the design and the style and the look of the document and, and all of that. So they're all, they've got a symbiotic relationship. So after an event, a method occurs. And these methods uh, could either be, methods could be reserved or built in, or um, they could be invented which are those that we make up ourselves. The built-in method that we just used was alert. Alert is a reserved built-in JavaScript method. We can look up all of the JavaScript methods. This book, for example, lists a bunch of them. Not all of them, because there's lots of them. We can look them up on the website I mentioned previously. Tuesday. Anyone remember that website I mentioned on Tuesday? Something about W's? W3schools.com so remember this website, w3schools.com. That had a reference of all the HTML, of all the CSS, of all the JavaScript. So there we can look up all the JavaScript methods and how to use them. We currently use one method, the alert method. And kind of reiterating some of the syntax, um, methods could have parameters. The alert method that we triggered a moment ago, the JavaScript command that we used a moment ago, had a parameter. We had it say hello. Sometimes a method um, accepts more than one parameter. Um, Sometimes it accepts no parameters. The parentheses are empty. Sometimes there's one parameter in there. Sometimes there's more than one, usually separated with commas. But methods could have parameters. That's what we've got here. This is, a, um, this is a, an attribute of HTML. Um, this is triggering, then, some JavaScript in the quotes. And we've triggered a JavaScript method, alert. And this is spelled lowercase. Um, again, usually what we're writing in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is lowercase. And oftentimes in, in JavaScript, when we're writing some sort of method, uh, either built-in ones or ones that we invent, if it requires more than one word, oftentimes we do see the capital letters. So this, this doesn't exist, but if it was my alert, it would most likely be written with a capital A as the second word. Question? Can you speak the rules for JavaScript? The rule? Yeah, so it's the rule that you have to put H, like H, rule, and then... Oh, um, 
I'm using this as an example here because I, I have a link that I want to click on to trigger this JavaScript command, but we could have other ways. We could have, for example, something is downloading, a song is downloading, and once the song is finished downloading, uh, we would have different code to trigger something else. So it doesn't always work with href pound symbol. This is just one of the possible examples of when we can use JavaScript. There's many ways, but this is one of the most direct ways to show. Because it's dependent on this event trigger. There was a click. I have other ones. On load, on unload, on focus, etc. So there's different ways a JavaScript could be triggered. And this had a parameter in, in parentheses. The thing is that a parameter could be, uh, could be used in apostrophes or not. It's going to depend. So some of the syntax um, applies for specific commands, for specific methods, sometimes not. So there is a variety of other rules that we're going to need to learn with JavaScript. But here we've got inline. We've got inline um, code. Let's do another one here. Let's let's create another. Uh, let's add a break first, right here. Now we know we're going to write the a tag. We're going to just kind of reuse the a tag again, just because it's quick, and we'll, we'll write log in. href uh, href pound sign again so it's going to be a link but it's not going to do anything yet and then we're going to add on click again and there's another JavaScript method another built-in command that we can use this one is called prompt open close parentheses also and we can also put in a um, a bit of text in in the single quotes. We'll say username, please. Let's see how that works. Save it and launch it. You should have a brand new login link. Click it and see what it does. Yes. So now we try the same thing with the next line. So then the same quotes. This time we're using prompt. Okay, so uh, prompt, that's a built in method. Try to see it, try it and see what happens. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, good eye and good memory. So um, why did I not continue to use the double quotes here and the double quotes here? Take a look at how my color changed. Up here we have double quotes at the beginning and at the end in single quotes and this is all purple. Here I've got double quotes here and double quotes here and this is black. 
Well, what happens is this is the web browser reads the code from top to bottom, left to right. So at the top here, it's it sees the sing, it sees the double quotes and it processes and it goes on and it goes on and then it sees the single quote and then its pair the other single quote and then its pair of double quotes and it says okay great but here it sees the opening double quote and then its closing quote even though that's not what I intended I intended the opening quote to be here and the closing quote to be here JavaScript says great you open the quote here you close the quote here and therefore then this doesn't make sense and then you've got another opening quote and another closing quote, and it only encompasses that. And then that doesn't make sense to it. So does it mean Yes, because the outside levels are the double quotes and the inside levels could be the single quotes because then uh, there's this inner level and then so we want the single quotes here because then let's see how the colors went to normal now it understands that you started your quotes here and its pair is over here not here and so its pair starts here and ends here so that's the right way that's the right way you want single quotes on the inside double quotes on the outside so you can't have single quotes you could. You're making us confused, but sure, that'll work. That'll work too. I can have the double quotes in the inside and the single quotes on the outside. That will work, whichever way, whichever way is fine for you, uh, whichever way is most memorable. Uh, we've been using this method, but that's perfectly fine too, as long as the pairs don't conflict. This single quote here will end over here, and these double quotes will end here, and therefore it's happy. <coughs> Now, if I were to make these single quotes here and single quotes here, then it would not be happy. Notice how my colors don't work anymore. Because it sees open quote, end quote. Gibberish, open quote, end quote. Doesn't matter single or double. So we just want to, to avoid confusion, I'm going to be doing double quotes on the outside, single quotes on the inside. And so now if we save and run that, we get a pop-up box that says username. Very cool, like a real website or a real app that adds you to asks you to log in. So there's my username, click OK. But so what? That's the next, that's more JavaScript. Well, what if I had nothing visible here until someone logs in and with a password and then my website loads up? Well, that's the next level. We're going to be building pieces we're going to be using JavaScript. That's the behavior part, the interactivity part, the, the layer, uh, because nothing uh, happens automatically. Uh, I'm collecting here a person's username, but I'm not doing anything with it. JavaScript uh, accepted my username and basically forgot about it, threw it away, didn't do anything with it. We would need to write more JavaScript to say, compare this username with my list of existing users. I found Victor's name. Great. Let him through and do something else. That could be easily 40 lines of code. More 40 lines of code just for the JavaScript. So that's a whole other can of worms we'll be getting into. But this is what our very first intro to JavaScript will be. We've written a little bit of inline JavaScript. We've used a couple of built-in methods. We'll get much more complex with more methods. We'll write our own methods because even though we might have a hundred possible kinds of JavaScript to use, we might need one method that doesn't exist. We can create it ourselves, just like we created a class called first div, or an ID called welcome message. We can create our brand new thing called my login prompt, or my website login prompt, and it will do, it will play a sound, and it will log you in, and it'll put a happy face, and all that stuff. And that's what the JavaScript does, the interactivity. And as time goes on in the next three weeks, we will work much more with this. And we will, by the end of the month, have, if you recall, on the first day, the example app. Remember, vmcampus.com slash sdce. 
you can go down to the mobile site. And this is where we're going to end up at the end of the course. Different screens, animations, pop-up, screens, customization, We're going to do getting directions. That's JavaScript also to, to check your location and draw a map. And give you turn by turn directions. That's all JavaScript. And because I've got this example on my server, you are welcome to go to that example and look at the code. It's all there. But we're still crawling, then we'll be eventually be walking, and then we'll be running. But we're going to end the main lecture about now. Any uh, general questions up at this point? Yes? What's the difference between an app that's just directed toward another page or other information, like a map, and one that draws from a long database of Yelp, for, for the user, I don't think there's much difference. Uh, where your data or your content is coming from, as long as it, as long as it's useful to the user, uh, for you as a programmer, perhaps there may be a huge difference because one might be easier to implement than the other. So I can't quite answer that question for everyone. Um, it really depends on your needs as a programmer and your abilities and your skills and your effort, weighing that with the needs of the user to see which will work best for both parties. Any other general questions? Yes? Is there something for functionality to uh, AJAX? Yes, AJAX is still very important nowadays. Um, what's it stand for again? Asynchronous Java something? So it's a part of JavaScript. So it is a part of JavaScript that is still in use, Ajax. Um, it's too complex to really explain what it does right now, but it's basically a way for us to further have e interaction on our site. Um, Ajax, just for a few buzzwords here uh, in my JavaScript notes. I'm not going to quite define them at the moment, but Ajax and JSON, or JSON, those are two important JavaScript concepts that are still in very much use. More complex than I can really answer at the moment, but um, if when you start learning, when you start learning basic uh, JavaScript, that'll lead you into Ajax and that'll lead you into JSON and that'll lead you into more complexity. Um, something else here briefly, jQuery. So there's lots of, there's a whole can of worms about uh, JavaScript. If you want to research on your own, you'll start to see some of this. So I'm going to put my code in the network folder. I'm going to upload the videos. Remember, if you haven't done so yet, send me an email to ask for those videos, and you can replay everything we've done so far. When we come back next time, we'll keep going. And again, if you check out any of those two books in my syllabus, I highly recommend them. And also the website, w3schools.com. And remember, it's very nice to start printing after I'm done talking. <laughs>